to be transported to a brilliant sci-fi universe filled with imaginative characters, high-tech weapons and gadgets, and unprecedented action-packed shooting adventure. Welcome to the brave new world of Ratchet and Clank. So now it's time to show off all the bonuses. Alright, so here we are. And first bonus I want to show off is Onyx. We want to show off all the weapons. So obviously we have the Bomb Glove, Pyrocitor, Blaster, trying to remember everything I've shown off, Taunter, Suck Cannon, Devastator, Whopper, Fizzle Bomb, uh, yeah, Tesla Claw, and Morpho Ray. So the weapons we haven't shown off are the Glove of Doom, and we'll show off what those do. Yeah, great to use little robots who will seek out enemies and blow up. <laughs> And we also have the Mind Glove. Pretty simple. Just throws out a mine, and if enemies get close to it, they'll home in on them. Alright, and we also have the Decoy Glove. Basically, throw out a decoy, and enemies will go after it. And the Gold Decoy Glove will eventually explode. Yep. Alright, drone device. Whoa! What the hell? Oh, that is cool. <laughs> okay. Yeah, both these little drones who will basically home in on enemies that you get close to. And last weapon to show off is the big one. The Rhino. Rip ya a new one, buddy. Just stand back fire destroys everything in front of you <laughs> and yeah that's all the weapons so now I'm probably gonna shut up for most of this but we have all the skill points actually so yeah take aim destroy a fighter or a bomber yeah we did that we did that uh, yeah we did that and that and that we also did that, that, yep, mm-hmm, yep, yeah, <laughs> uh-huh, mm-hmm, do, 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 <clears throat> yeah, we did that, <laughs> yeah, that's, Really annoying skill point that I didn't even bother with. Mm -hmm. Heavy traffic. That's the skill point for not getting hit on the grind rail session that I unfortunately didn't do. Back up 4,500 4, points. Kill all of those guys. Careful crews. Not getting hit. And going commando. <laughs> yeah. So there's all the skill points if you're wondering what they are. Cheats. I did not do all the cheats in the PS3 version. You can look up a YouTube video on how to do them yourself. It involves doing set acrobatic moves for Ratchet. Now the cool thing here, you can watch all the pre-rendered cinematics here. And whatever level you're in, you can watch all the in-game cinematics from there. Now we also have a sketchbook to show off. Ow. Okay. Some concept sketches for Ratchet. Yeah, he would always be an alien creature with fur, and if anyone asks you, Ratchet is a Wombax. <laughs> Next. Clank 2 also went through many forms. His, his he was originally even younger looking with a bigger head and smaller body. In fact, at first Clank was three, for s three much smaller robots. In the end, we decided to use just one so that we could develop his personality even more easily. And the finished Ratchet, Ratchet and Clank image. <laughs> yeah, an initial I within two weeks of the initial idea for the game. Wow. <laughs> Alright, 
Here's some concept images on Battaglia. Wow. Kind of the way the development goes sometimes. <laughs> nice. Cliffhanging structures. Oh yeah, Planet Eudora. I'm just gonna let the text scroll by, you can read it yourself. <laughs> Alright. So, a uh, tower from Core 2. <clears throat> Would've been really nice if, you know, the text actually, you know, if I didn't have to wait for it to scroll, but whatever. <sighs> Plarg equals bad news, of course. A hanging power source for one of our factories. Can you guess which one? I honestly don't know. Alright. So yeah, Planet Eudora. And what's the bottom one? <clears throat> oh yeah, Bomb Factory on Hoven. Okay. Alright, Generators. You know, I never really took a lot of time to actually look around the levels. <laughs> New planets. Yeah, he's only doing one. At least he was only doing one. Yeah, Metropolis. There's actually a prototype video that they showed off on the Ratchet and Clank 10th anniversary. <laughs> and yeah, it's a pretty good level to show off. Started a war between the designers and the artists. <laughs> oh boy. Hmm. Alrighty then. Replete? Don't you mean complete? Whatever. Ah. <laughs> Quartz Trader. Oh yeah, Battalion was originally going to be a daytime level. I guess it just didn't work out, you know, with the place getting blown up and the whole, you know, the war setting. Guess they thought it would be better if it was nighttime. <laughs> Oh, uh, rainstorm. That's right. Ooh. Huh. <clears throat> Animation director and lead character designer. I believe, wasn't Dan Johnson the lead character designer? So yeah, which one is Dan Johnson? I can't tell. I want to say the one at the top is... No, that can't be him. Oh, whatever. Right, Ratchet's first ship. Da, 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 da. Yeah, I guess it was originally going to be like a helicopter. Well, no, that's the shadow. Oh, uh, yeah. The one at the bottom looks ugly. I'm glad they went with the one at the top. <laughs> All right, and the last ship. <laughs> I only have a full cover model, unfortunately. And you have some en enemy vehicles, grind boots, and mine glove. There's a lot more sketches here than I remember there being. <laughs> 
Shit <laughs> concepts for a giant clinic. Holy crap. <laughs> oh man, he looks like um reactor from Deadlocked. I just remember that hilarious cutscene. <laughs> Some fun enemy designs. One made it into the game. Can you pick the winner? Which one was it? I honestly can't even tell. I want to say the one at the bottom right does look familiar. But I could be completely wrong. And the many faces of Big Al. He's probably what most people think game developers look like. <laughs> Here's a wrench. <coughs> It's mistakenly called an axe. Yeah, I've had people watch me play this and mistake it for an axe plenty of times. Alright. Visual bombs, suck cannon. <sighs> Be nice if the text scrolled faster. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> Hydro pack. <laughs> How long have I been recording? I've recorded for two and a half hours. That's the longest I've ever like recorded without like taking a break. I usually like I'll record quite a bit in one day and then just take a break. But yeah, another early concept art of Ratchet. Oh, box cover concept. Yeah, that wouldn't work. It makes the game look darker than it really is, but it still looks really cool. I want that as my phone background. I should look that up. And here we go. First image of Ratchet unveiled to the world in March 2002. It's also the... Well, it's similar to the original cover for the, the US box art. Alright. And here's some... Oh, yeah. Okay, so it's back to... Okay. And we also have the epilogue, which is basically just <laughs> magazine covers. Ratchet, the furry mechanic who created a panic. Ooh, nice. <laughs> Nosy news. Lost up, I'll do anything for a few bolts. Is Skid hooked on Nano? <laughs> Heavy on... <laughs> oh boy. Popular plumbers. I saved the galaxy from an evil mutated strain of dry rot. Prime, robot of the year. Good job, man. <laughs> Read her digested. And then me boy ate her and now she's in love. Oh. Okay. Plead not guilty, okay. Battalia Chronicles. Lone Commando wins war. Or, or so he says. <laughs> Hoverboarder. How Skid gets his extra altitude. It's a nano. <laughs> Home's in business. Ratchet and Clank, the motion picture. <laughs> well, what do you know? That's... Just over ten years later, that became a real thing. Hotbots. Okay, that's enough. <laughs> Uh, I didn't want to go back. Oh, whatever. Anyways, these commercials, if you remember these commercials, they're very funny. I'm actually going to turn my mic off, and I'm just going to let you guys watch these, because they're really quiet for some reason. Actually, I think the commercials might be really loud, and the making of a video is really quiet. But yeah, I'll come back and talk to you guys after these are done. That is Corey. He's helping us with our inflatable decoy test for Ratchet and Clank. Oh, man. The inflatable decoy. One of 36 weapons and gadgets not fit for this world. Ready to for team. Okay, Pete here is going to try to hit hold on, that target with the Devastator, a rocket launcher designed for Ratchet and Clank. Oh, man! <laughs> oh, 
The Devastator. One of 36 weapons and gadgets not fit for this world. Rated T for team. That is the Morpheray, and that, of course, is Jerry. Uh, the Morpheray is used in Ratchet and Clank to turn your enemies into chickens. You no, know, wait, before you do that, just explain to me how it's gonna work. Oh, oh it worked. <laughs> Jerry's a chicken. <laughs> Are you sure we can turn him back? Jerry? <laughs> the Morpheray, one of 36 weapons and gadgets not fit for this world. Rated T for team. Prepare to be transported to a brilliant sci-fi universe filled with imaginative characters, high-tech weapons and gadgets, and unprecedented action-packed shooting adventure. Welcome to the brave new world of Ratchet and Clank. When we started talking about the ideas behind Ratchet and Clank, this character that rockets from planet to planet with weapons and gadgets, well, weapons suddenly jump to the foreground. Ratchet lives on a backwater planet out in the edges of the galaxy. He's a tinkerer, loves to put things together and take them apart to see how they work, very curious. He's got this really strong thirst for adventure. And lucky for him, he gets to meet Clank, which allows him to travel to new worlds. And Ratchet and Clank meet each other, but they don't necessarily get along. Ratchet just wants to go out and blow stuff up and have a good time, and, and Clank is much more serious about accomplishing his goals. Showcasing an impressive arsenal of state-of-the-art and radical weapons and gadgets, Ratchet and Clank delivers the future of entertainment here and now. When you get weapons in this game, there's such immediate gratification. You can go out and blow the crap out of everything. With the gadgets, we wanted to make sure that there was a lot of different options for the player when they're playing to kind of explore a lot of different ways to kind of cause some havoc and, and, and destruction. There's the Tesla Claw, which uh, shoots a bolt of electricity out, which actually picks characters up and throws them in air, and they explode. You've got the Suck Cannon, which allows you to suck characters in and hold them and fire them back out. The uh, Rhino is an acronym for Rip You a New One and you just stand back, fire that thing, and it destroys anything in its way. I love the Pyrocitor. I'm not sure what that says about me. One of the most unique weapons we have is the Visibomb. It's awfully fun to cruise around the level from the bird's eye view and then target an enemy on the ground and just blow them up. We were really surprised how quickly Ratchet came together. Ratchet started as this really small, scrappy cat type thing. Then kind of a much taller dog-like creature. And what I ended up doing was actually taking these two forms and putting them together. And that's pretty much how we ended up with them. As artists, we've set a really high standard for what we want to achieve in this game. But it, it feels really good to know that programmers, the designers, everybody has set equally high standards. Everybody who comes on board here is excellent at what they do and have really high expectations of delivering excellence. When someone plays an Insomniac game, they, they can see anywhere they look in the game, there's an attention to detail, quality, as well as technical performance that, that is never lacking. Developed by Insomniac Games, Ratchet & Clank is the development team's first entertainment venture for the PlayStation 2. We knew we had to come up with something that was going to raise the bar even farther than Spyro had as far as action platformers went. And that's where Ratchet & Clank came from. We're actually expanding the genre. We're trying to break out of what people typically consider the action platformer or character action game genre. One of the big differences between Spyro and Ratchet is being able to animate this stuff on the PS2. In a single level of this game, is probably more art than was in an entire game in one of our PS1 releases. Every single level of the game, we bring forth something new for the player to do. 
by the fifth or sixth level of this game, we are up to the complexity of the strongest titles in the category. And there's a lot of levels in this game. It's a very deep machine. We've written immense amounts of code and assembly language, probably more than 100,000 lines, compared to what we did on the PS1. You know, more by a factor of 10. We can have very rich, detailed environments. We can have lots of enemies attacking you at once um, with their different behaviors. Um, the AI has become more complex. With the faster processor speeds, we can have um, many ships and planes and vehicles just traveling through to breathe life into the environments. There's loads and loads of stuff wherever you look. There's detail, there's movement, explosions. It's a busy world. We're not just creating these environments and expecting them to sit there and expecting people to say, wow, your polygons are so pretty. The point is, it's alive and there's a lot going on. It's not a static universe, it's an interactive universe, and you interact with it. This game has a lot of great things, art, technology, design, power from the PlayStation 2, but, but the best part of it is you get to blow shit up. With a team of talented designers, programmers, artists, and animators, Insomniac Games raises the bar and delivers another captivating game only for the PlayStation 2. When I tell people about what I do for a living, like, that's not work. It's fun. The Insomniacs don't, don't take themselves too seriously, and people love to come to work and, and, and just have a good time, and I think that really is shown in our characters. <laughs> look, plumber's crack. What did you just say? I said, look, the plumber's back. All right, wise guy. We, as a company, are committed to giving our games a lot of humor. We use a little bit more sarcasm, and the humor's a little bit more biting. <laughs> With an immense arsenal of gadgets and weapons, innovative gameplay mechanics, an evolving economic system, unparalleled technology, and vibrantly detailed graphics, Ratchet & Clank is a galaxy-stomping, adrenaline-soaked masterpiece. We've gone out of our way to make this thing the largest, loudest, most active world we could possibly think of. What Insomniac has done with this game blows my mind every time I see it. Like, I just sit in awe and stare at the, at the visual material and just the all-encompassing feel that this game offers. There are a lot of things that the players have to do, a lot of things that players have to keep in mind, but when it comes down to it, it's really just about blowing shit up. Blow up a lot of shit. Blow up. Blowing shit up. Ratchet and Clank, coming to a galaxy near you. <laughs> that was interesting. Um, I really like being able to see some of the, like, still, like, beta and alpha built stuff in the game in that video. But, yeah, that was it. That's everything in Ratchet & Clank. You've seen everything. Uh, I'll see you guys in Ratchet & Clank 2 eventually. I'm probably not going to get around to that until, like, next year. But I really hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you had as much fun as I did, with the exception of the couple of levels where I got a bit frustrated, but hey, what can you do? And I will see you guys in whatever game I play next. Hopefully it'll be either be... Actually, no. I've got another game plan, but hopefully before I do Ratchet & Clank 2, I'm going to do Sly 1 and Jack 1. Don't know which order I'm going to go in, but we'll see how things progress. Anyways, I will see you guys then. Nice.